Okay, guys, this is excuse. I mean, excuse me. This is grace, excuse, or remedy. We've been off a day or two. So we're starting up again today. But today, guys, we're going into the book of Hosea. Yes, we're going into the Old Testament. There's good sound reason for that. You got to have the old to understand the new, guys. They both go hand in hand. So let's turn to page 1389. If you're reading the KJV, we're going to go into the book of Hosea. And we're going to start at chapter 1. We're going to go right through it. Uh, there's 13 chapters. It may take us a few, a few sessions, but we'll do what we can, okay? Today just starts off as a reading. This is what's on my heart for today. I do ask the Lord every day for a message, and sometimes it could be just reading. All right, so this is how we're just going to start off. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea the son of Beri in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take a wife unto thee, a wife of whoredoms, and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Deblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name lo ro for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned lo ro she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name Loamai, for you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, You are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, You are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Chapter 2 Say ye unto your brethren, am I, and to your sisters, Rahama, plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let, there, let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. Lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born and make her as a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with thirst. And I will not have mercy upon her children for they be the children of whoredoms. For their mother hath played the harlot, she hath conceived them hath done shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers that gave me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. And she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. And she shall seek them, but she shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me than now. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold which they prepared for Baal. Therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in the season thereof, and I will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. I will also cause all of her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and all of her solemn feasts. 
and I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, whereof she has said, These are my rewards that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the breast of the field shall eat them, eat them, or excuse me, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. And I will visit upon her the days of Baalim, wherein she burned incense to them, and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers, and forgot me, saith the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will allure her, and bring her into the wilderness, and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her her vineyards from there, and the valley of Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, and as in the day when she came out of the land of Egypt. And I, and it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more Baalai. For I will take away the names of Baalim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow, and the sword, and the battle out of the earth, and will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth thee unto me forever, yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness, and in judgment, and in loving kindness, and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. You know, I want to take a moment here on this, you know, and I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness. What is the gift that is given through faith, guys? We know this. The Holy Spirit is given from above in faith. When you receive the Holy Spirit in faith, you're receiving the very thing, the very person, excuse me, that dwelt between those two cherubims guys i cannot emphasize this enough on that mercy seat nor can i emphasize enough that the first uh tabernacle that the children of israel visited while they were in the wilderness and when this was set up so god could actually dwell amongst them was one of the first temples and it was a tent inside the holy of holies was the essence the very spirit of the living god of israel that very self same that led him out of egypt the very self-same that led them to the promised land, the very self-same that guided and fed them, rained meat upon them, gave them bread every day, two on the Sabbath. The very self-same that uh, when they built those two temples, okay, the Solomon Temple and that of uh, Herod when he had rebuilt the temple. And then we're talking about when Jesus himself was the ultimate temple. Promises, priestly duties, everything, sacrifices, everything was fulfilled in the King of Kings when he came. The very, the very temple, the tabernacle of all tabernacles. When he fulfilled the requirements of the law, and he's and he did everything in a in a in a on the earth so that they could be done in heaven. And when he did it, and he fulfilled all the requirements, then when he died, he gave himself as the fulfillment of the promise that God would take all of our sins away and not because we're doing it. No, no, of course not. Of ourselves, we have no righteousness, but Christ himself is righteousness to us. He walked perfectly. He never made a mistake. He rose up on that day. He went to the Father with the sacrifice, the very Lamb's blood, guys, that sanctified every single believer on this planet. And that very self-same lamb's blood paid for every sin of every person predestinated and pre-known from the very foundation up to this current moment and then beyond. But you can only receive it through faith. Without faith, you can't receive it, guys. You got to have faith. Upon receiving the Holy Spirit of promise through faith, the very self same that Abraham first received by faith, when the Lord says, walk before me and be perfect, faith moved Abraham to receive that promise. It was faith that gave him that promise, and he became the father of many nations. Look up, count the stars if you can. You ever gone to a beach, see if you can number the sand. Far more than that where you go. 
is the seed of Abraham. Many, many. So many, so much, can't be numbered. There are many. And the Lord says, once we receive the Holy Spirit of promise by faith, we receive also faithfulness. The Lord causes us to be faithful, to walk in his ways, guys. Not to walk in the ways of the earth, but to walk in the ways that he has set forth for every single believer on this planet. What's betrothed mean to you? We are the wife of, we are the bride of Christ. And what groom wants a wife that's been soiled? What groom? What groom would want an adulteress for a wife? Or what groom would want someone that was noted for whoredom? Remember Revelations? Where the woman's riding the dragon, that woman represents the bride of Christ, but not the bride that's supposed to be. This bride is an adulteress that's riding on the dragon that's in the book of Revelations. That is exactly the Catholic Church. And any other institution. No, I'm not going to throw the stone just at the Catholic Church. No. But any institution that is called a Christian institution, regardless of whether it's Catholic, and no, they ain't. Or any other institution. Guys, I'm going around the globe with this one. If you have received Christ as your Savior, my friends, and you ask Him into your heart by faith, and you ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit by faith, then your vessel is now sanctified. By faith you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and by faith you receive the gift of righteousness, which is not your own. It was bought and paid for by someone else. His name was Jesus. And when He comes down from the Father of, of lights, the perfect Lord God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, both Father and Son dwells in the believer. And if you believe by faith that the Father and Son comes in to the believer by faith, what happens to sin, guys? It's purged out. You no more serve the things that once had you entangled and snared by the enemy. You are now a new creature in Christ. Don't you remember the scriptures? I will betroth thee unto me in faithfulness. And what's the best part of this scripture here, guys? You shall know the Lord. Know the Lord means exactly that. You shall know Him. And because you're already known of Him. You shall know the righteousness of God. You shall know the peace of God. You shall know the good fruits that belong to Christ that He's given to you freely. The very treasures that open up from heaven and into the believer. and be trolled into loving kindness and into righteousness and righteousness guys is not a big word come on righteousness simply is doing the right thing okay doing the right thing remember that guys let's continue on to verse 21 and it shall come to pass in that day that i will hear hear say of the lord i will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth and the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel, and I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy, and I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. Guys, the Lord first went unto his own, but they didn't recognize who he was. Hence he turned unto the Gentiles, and he was a light to lighten the Gentiles. Look, Paul was the messenger that was sent. But who was sent in Paul? Was it not the Holy Spirit? Was it not the Holy Spirit leading Paul to lead that light to the Gentiles? The, the, that light is prophesied of, I went to my own. My own didn't recognize me. They didn't receive me. So I turned to the Gentiles and they will hear and they will understand and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Those that he had no mercy upon will now obtain that mercy, albeit through the same faith that Abraham had. You understand? Then said the, chapter 3 now. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who took to other gods and loved flagons of wine. 
So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for an homer of barley and a half homer of barley. And I said to her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot and thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for you. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without a teraphim, the very days that they are in now. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Guys, these are those selfsame latter days, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, let's see now. Chapter 4. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven, yea. The fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Guys, this is that prophecy I was telling you about some time ago. <clears throat> about how in Hosea, and I think it's either Zephaniah or Zechariah, we're, we're probably going to run across it. Um, the Lord said in the latter days, when when he does the very very I mean when when how can I put this when uh, when the Lord said that was enough and it was time for the world to end because of the wickedness and iniquity that was on this planet in the days of Noah eight people were saved off this planet eight But there was no mention about the fish being destroyed. As a matter of fact, probably the fish is what consumed most of the flesh that fell in it. But he says in this book that he's going to take, yes, the fish away too. I have to refer you to YouTube guys on this one. You do not have to believe me. Let the figures, let the facts state what is actually happening right now according to the word of God. The fish are dying. Hundreds of tons, unknown hundreds of tons, are dying. YouTube, 2016. Look at what's happening right now with fish. You need some more? 30,000 to 45,000 out of whack of cattle are dropping dead. For no apparent reason. They're blaming the bird flu on some other things with the birds, the chickens and whatnot. No, this is prophecy, guys. This is the plagues of Egypt, but multiplied globally. I would I would advise that we all take note of what the Lord's trying to get the earth's attention. And guys, that includes every single person hearing these messages. The Lord is knocking at the hearts of men. Okay? Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for the people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fail, or excuse me, th therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night. The false, the beast, is going to fall in the day. The false prophet's going to fall with them. It's not going to be a good situation for them. Shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with him in the night. And I will destroy thy mother. There's some bad stuff coming, guys. What would thy mother be? Well, what comes to mind is the harlot riding the dragon. And if you have children by whoredoms, what would that be? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, guys. People aren't reading the Old Testament. And if you don't read the Old Testament, you're not going to understand fully the New Testament. They go hand in hand, guys. I know people are saying that they're not under the law, but under grace. But truly, guys, 
unless you can explain what the grace of God really is and only through the power of the Holy Spirit can this be done. If you really look at the law, guys, truly, look at Genesis. I, I've been reading that book myself. Look at Genesis. That's one of the books that people refer to as the law. And it is one of the five books of Moses which is categorized as the law. But it's really shadows of the Lord. It's really um, stories. They start off with creation. They start off with the sons of God. That uh, It goes from creation to the sons of God uh, mating with women to the corruption that ensued to the flood. That's Noah. Afterwards, men rise up again. You got Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, these are all stories. We're talking about the patriarchs. We're talking about Isaac. We're talking about Abraham, uh, Jacob, Joseph, all the way through until we get the 50, uh, 50th chapter. That's the book of Genesis. When you go into the book of Exodus, you're talking then about the bondage that was prophesied in the book of Genesis that the children of Israel would indeed be subject to as prophesied by the Lord to Abraham. That gets fulfilled and then the Lord sends a shepherd, a messenger, into Egypt to take out that nation because it was promised to Abraham. That's the book of Exodus. And after the book of Exodus gets started and you got that happening, it goes from the plagues goes really from the time that Moses is sent into Egypt, the plagues that come down upon Egypt because of what's going on with Israel, the Hebrew nation. God fulfills his promise, leads the children out of bondage, leads them through the deserts, leads them through the narrow way, gets them right to the bowl of the mount. Then you have the story about what happened with the bull. And yes, it was ground to powder. Moses threw it in the river made him a drink. I would have made him a drink it. They were butt naked dancing around an idol when the Lord God had just delivered them. I'd have been a little upset too. And without Moses standing in the gap, there would be no nation of Israel. Without Jesus standing in the gap, there'd be no seed of Abraham. Do you understand? The Lord was very, very merciful. What did Moses say? I'm going to raise up a shepherd likened unto myself. And when you hear him, you better listen to him. Because he will not be uh, playing around. He's not going to tolerate foolishness. So you got the children of Israel. They're in bondage. They're rescued. Lord sends a messenger, takes them out. By the time they get into the desert, and then what happens? We're talking about the book of Exodus now. The Lord sets up the first temple congregation, for, uh, uh, the first temple that was in the wilderness where people, uh, the high priest was set up. The sacrifices and how to do them were set up. Medical advice was provided. Anything from a man having a running issue to a woman having menstrual problems, birth, all that stuff. Priestly duties, Sacrifices, cleansings, feast days. What to expect when you took a wife. All these things were led up to the very first mentioning of the law as we know it. Thou shalt not kill. You know, thou shalt not commit adultery. And then we go into Leviticus. It's mainly of what to do and what not to do. And it repeats a lot of what was already said in Exodus. And the books thereafter do the same thing. They're repeating of the same. And so basically what Jesus did, my, my friends, is he fulfilled the requirements of the high priest, one priest forever. He fulfilled all the sacri sacrifices that would have been required for sin in himself. He fulfilled it once for all people for all time. He fulfilled all things. That's why when he went to the to his people, they didn't re, when he went to his own, they didn't recognize who he was. 
and who he is to us. The fulfillment of the law. I am going to be getting into a Bible study. Ask the Lord specifically for this. Pray for Brother Dave, if you would, because I really would like to share on this. And that way you can really understand then when we take the law, what to do and not to do, what was fulfilled and not fulfilled, then you compare it with what Jesus said. And what did he quote, guys? All four Gospels, all the way through the New Testament. What was he quoting? Guys, what was he quoting? What were all of they quoting? The law. He just made some amendments because he was a fulfillment for most of it. So when it comes right down to it, no, you don't murder, you don't cheat, you don't lie, you don't covet something's not yours, you, you, don't, you don't blaspheme, you don't do the things that you were just delivered from. Well then, how, how, Dave, do we walk in that through grace, the true grace of God, which is the Spirit of God coming down from on high, both the Father and the Son dwelling in the believer, walking out Christ's life through you. That's the crowning glory of the promise of God, guys. That is the crowning glory. Anyway, let's go back to Scripture. Let's go back to 6 again on chapter 4. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. That's sad, isn't it? Don't be forgotten, honey. He's got it. He's got us engraven on the palm of his hand, and nothing's going to separate that. But you got to first have faith, like Abraham did. We all have to walk in faith, not by sight. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, will I change their glory into shame? Their glory into shame. Guys, I might want to refer to the current church we are in today. You would expect that from an unbeliever because they haven't met the Lord. So they're still walking in their shame, not knowing it is shame. Am I right? But how, how you suppose it might appear to the average thinking individual that if the church is doing the very same things that the world is doing, what do you think really saves them? If he didn't pardon the angels that did, he's not going to pardon the church of, of uh, the saints today. you got to walk in faith. If we're going to put on Christ, we have to walk as he walked. We have to stay in the scriptures. The Lord said, if you stay in the scriptures, you're going to know the truth and I'm going to make you free. The Holy Spirit is a very, very important individual. Without the Holy Spirit... How does the vessel get sanctified? Without the treasure in the house, what's in the house? Wouldn't it be considered like a ruinous heap? The Holy Spirit sanctifies the house. It gives glory in the house. It causes you to walk in light. You see what's ahead of you. You're not going to see anything if you're walking in the dark. And you're not going to be any different than those that are outside if you refuse to let the Lord turn the light on inside. Going to church every Sunday, guys, does not make you a Christian. Continuing in His Word is a good start. And not only doing the Word, guys, knowing it, it doesn't, it's not going to make you a Christian. What was the very thing that was used against the Christians of old, including Jesus Himself? The enemy knows the Word of God as well. And that's what we're tempted with. That's what we're. That's what is used as a weapon against us. So it's very important you know the word of God. It is the sword that the Lord says to use. You don't use the word of God as an excuse to do something wrong. You use the word of God to avoid those desolations. And don't think to yourself that just because we confess with our mouth that we're saved because... The fallen angels did too, that, that uh, they, they believed God as well. And it doesn't save them because they turned away. Don't turn away. Do the first works. When you're going to fellowship, do what the Lord says. Don't just hear what he says. Don't be a forgetful hearer of the word. Do it. That's what blesses the Lord and that's when the Lord blesses you. Ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit because it's through this gift that we see. 
It's through this gift that we're sanctified, and it's through this gift that we're raised up to a life uncorruptible, reserved in heaven for each and every one of us that believe it. So let's remember that. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. Do you know the Lord says when he comes back, how many actually am I going to find when I do come back? Eight people, guys, in Noah's day. And it wasn't too long after Abraham, it was in Abraham's day with Sodom and Gomorrah, guys. How do you think the Lord may feel today about what's going on in the world today? Just think about it. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways, for their ways. The Lord said with uh, the days of Noah that they refused to walk, in, they, they corrupted his way. What was his way, guys? His way originally is if we were supposed to walk in the truth. When God first created man and woman, he had a set of rules that would have been instinct to the believer. But before Noah, the world had already corrupted his way. They turned to such sin and degradation that the world had to be destroyed. It, it was a smoke in the, in the Lord God's nose. He had to get rid of it. It was just that bad. Now think about now what's happening. They will walk in their own ways. They have forgotten me, saith the Lord. They have forgotten me, saith the Lord. And that's what's happening today. Everybody's walking in their own ways, and yet we forgot that one loaf that the Lord broke. That one bread, he said, this you eat. That's the word of God. This you eat. This cup is the new covenant. This cup is life. This you drink. But as I said before, and I'll say it again, along the lines, uh, someone, and I don't know when it started, but somebody just said, well, you know, I don't like that one thing about the word of God. So I, I'm just going to tweak it a little bit more so it can fit most of the people that I'm fellowshipping with. Hence, you got a new uh, S-E-C-T-S. And it keeps going on and going on and going on. Somebody else didn't like what they said. So pretty soon, that original recipe that was passed out by the Lord himself has now become so many loaves that no one, no one, how many desolations do you think there are in the world, guys? If nobody's following the word of God, if nobody's preaching the word of God, I was just a one fellowship and I kid you not. I don't remember a Bible except the one we were carrying. And I don't remember the pastor. I just don't remember him opening up one and preaching out of it. Is this what it's come to, guys? I am happy to say there are some that were clean and they've escaped. Pastors are now marrying homosexuals, guys. They're allowing a lot of things into that bread that was never meant to be. I don't know what Bible's being read in those fellowships. I refer you to the adulteress riding the dragon and that's drunk on that uh, wine. She's, you know what that wine represents, by the way? It means their covenants, their doctrines. Are you understanding? The adulteress riding the dragon is the Catholic Church riding that dragon. And those fornications are being spread out all over the place. Do you know there's over 1.2 billion Catholics on this planet that believe that it's okay to address statues as saints or to worship bones or to bow to idols or to talk to them? What difference do you think this is compared to the time, at the very earliest time, 
where a man would take a bundle of sticks, create a little fire, make a supper, put the fire out, take one of the sticks from the fire, carve it up a little bit, stick it in the ground, and bend down and worship it. I don't see a difference. Both stick, wood, clay, and rock. Its molded images are all the same. They're lifeless, and those that worship them are as well. Wake up. The time is very short. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase. They're not going to understand because they're... You know what increase means, guys? Uh, hold on. Paula, would you go upstairs, please, and get me the other glasses because I can't see. They're in the blue thing. When you read something where it says, For they shall eat and not have enough. This is the same as saying that they're going to be looking for the Word of God, but they will not be able to find it. Because it's been altered so much, guys. Think about this for a minute. There are reportedly, only the Lord knows for sure, but reportedly, over 41,000 different doctrines pertaining to SECTSs. Okay, I have an accent, so I spell sometimes. Now, if you got 41,000 different individuals claiming to preach the gospel, as Jesus laid it out, this is what we're being told here, guys. If you got that many people preaching the gospel that claim to know it and yet are preaching another gospel, then you're not receiving the very bread that Christ died to give you. If you're receiving any other thing than that one loaf that's been broke and passed. And what did the crowds do, guys? It started from the front of the crowd. They passed it backwards. Same loaf. The word of God's not supposed to be changed. Do you know there's a little warning about that in the back of the book of Revelations? Not to mess with his words. And there's good reason why the scribes made sure not one dot or comma was out of place. Not one vowel. So let's think about this for a minute. If you got everybody changing the very original recipe, then this comes to mind here. For they shall eat. They're constantly feeding on... Okay, now I want you to imagine this, guys, in your heart. You can do this. Imagine, if you will, you're sitting at a table and you're eating a supper, but you're never getting full. You're never satisfied. Something's missing. You know what I mean? Could it be because they're not feeding you the very bread that Jesus blessed? It multiplied. It was sufficient. For they shall eat and not be satisfied. Because they're not eating the word of God. They're not eating the word of truth, guys. That's why they're never full. They shall commit whoredoms. So if you eat in the word, think about it. If you're if you're in a fellowship, now let the doctrine, we're talking doctrine, okay? If you're in a fellowship and they're telling you that it's okay, you went to them, let's just say. And you knew you weren't supposed to do something, but you made a mistake, right? Okay. Brother Dave would just tell you, you got to go before the throne of grace and you swear. Not you can't swear because you can't make one hair white or black. But you go to the throne of grace and you tell the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength, who is the high priest. That you were sorry. That it was dumb. Confess your sin and don't be afraid to confess it because you can't hide it. It's there. And the high priest himself would forgive. However. Yes, there is a However. If you go out again and do the exact same thing, you got some problems, guys. I referred to the book of Hebrews. I haven't gotten there yet, because that's a very startling book. So if you're going to a fellowship, though, and you go before that pastor in private, in his office, let's just say, 
and you're telling them, look, you know, gee whiz, it was one time and then it led to two and then three and then four. What do I do, Pastor? I know I got a problem, but what am I supposed to do? And then the pastor is sitting there saying, well, Phil, I got to tell you, you know, it is a good thing that the Lord died for our sins and that we are sinners. Phil, you have to understand that. You just have to accept what you cannot change. The, you know, the Lord did say that the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Do you, remember, do you see how those words can be turned against you? But how soothing they are for somebody that's looking for an excuse? And then you hear uh, the pastor saying, well, Phil, you do know that you're born into sin and there's not a one of us that can escape that. You know what you just told that man? That the one who created all things, the mouth, the heart, the planet, the stars, he created the entire human body and everything pertaining to it. He created everything from a blade of grass to the universe, to the heavens, to the angels. You just told him, pastors, that God, that God, that God was not able to defeat sin. You don't think there might be a problem with that kind of thinking, with that kind of theology? You don't think there might be? And then, the slap a USDA sticker on it, you tell them you do know that, you, you know, we are under grace. Well, what is that, Phil says? Well, um, it's unlimited mercy. You'd be surprised some of the stuff that is coming out of some of these pulpits. And let's not forget, Phil. We are justified in all things. By the law, we could not be justified in all things, Phil. But we are justified in, in all things. That's what the Bible said. You want me to show it to you? You just told that man that not only can he do the things of the flesh, but you just slapped a permission sticker right on him and he'll continue. And that he's okay with the Lord to do it. Justified, of course. Meanwhile, the wife who used to be part of the congregation there has just divorced him, took the children, left the church because of advice that should have been sound, balanced, and godly wasn't given at the pulpit by the one in charge of it. And you may be saying, well, Mr. Preacher Man, John 1A. And I would say, yeah, well, Mr. Preacher Man, John 1, 6 through 10. That's the remedy. And when a pastor, and I'm going to tell you all of you people out there right now, every brother, every sister, every pastor, every evangelist, every prophet. I don't know anybody out there in YouTube land. But I hope to see you someday in glory land. If we profess with our mouth that we are children. Guys, listen to those words for a minute. How much love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. Having the power to become sons of God. And if we're sons of God. Where's this justified stuff come from? And where? who started that rumor that the Lord lost the fight against sin on that day? As, as a matter of fact, when the Lord of glory died on that day, on that very day, there were innumerable angels born on that day.
like the stars of heaven or the sand that's along the sea coast. Count it. That's what was fulfilled that day. So much so that a few actually came out of their graves and went into the cities and showed themselves. Let's continue. Uh, and shall not increase, but they have left off to take heed to the Lord. They just, guys, you can't go in there and just look for a smoothie or a, a quick fix and then you're off to see the uh, world as it is. You can't go in on a Sunday, say, I'm sorry, expect the pastor to absolve you and go right back out Sunday afternoon and start doing the very things that you just asked to be forgiven of. Guys, come on. I'm not throwing stones. I'm trying to warn you. Hordem and wine and new wine take away the heart. Hordem and wine and new wine take away the heart. My people ask counsel at their stocks. And their staff declares unto them, For the spirit of whoredom hath caused them to err, to be very grievously mistaken. Whoredom is when the blushing bride turns out not to be a blushing bride. You know, back in the very old time, when a wife was betrothed to a husband on the wedding night, yes, this is so, I just read this. On the wedding night, when a wife was betrothed, and they finally got married, and by the way, you know how they were married, guys? You know how um, Isaac uh, married his wife, Rebecca? He took her into his mom's tent, who had just passed away. He was mourning. He loved her right off. He made love to her. That became his wife in the eyes of God. They both joined together. They became one. That's what did it. So, back in the day though, when you did become man and wife, and when the husband had his wedding night complete, and he found out the next day, and ladies, I, I'm one of those pastors just going to say it like it is because it's in the scripture. Signs of virginity was very clear. If a man married a maid and she wasn't a maid, in other words, if she wasn't a virgin, you'd know it because the next day there'd be no blood on the sheets. That was the signs of her virginity, of her pureness. So if she had known a man, before the husband, that was a death sentence back then. I mean, that was bad news. And he could put her away at the very least. However, if for any chance she, she was a virgin, she'd be vindicated, of course. Because the signs of her virginity or her pureness to her husband would have left stains on that sheet. Would have been kept too for a witness. And the reason they kept him is so a man couldn't say she wasn't like she said she was when I married her. But the parents would have the proof. You understand what I'm saying? So what do you think um, the Lord's going to feel about a church who's supposed to be a virgin bride? You know what a virgin bride Virtuous. Keeping the commandments. Loving him. We're supposed to look as a bride we're supposed to love the Lord with all of our heart with all of our strength guys with all of our mind with all of our body just like a bride would love the groom she's engaged to marry you understand what I'm saying we're not supposed to be or are we ever called to be adulteresses or whores that sleep around it sounds strong language, guys, but that's exactly what that image of the whore or adulteress riding the dragon, drinking a cup of wine. Did you notice it's a cup of abominations? That means the doctrines that she's drinking that's being spread globally are not the things that a blushing virgin bride should be drinking. 
you know in your own heart what we're called to be. What's a saint to you? Virtuous, righteous, merciful, caring, sharing, loving without respect to persons, but especially loving God. That's a virgin bride. That's what we're called to be. We're the bride. An adulteress is quite the opposite. She's sleeping around. She's drinking a cup of abominations, fornications, iniquity. She goes off. She does this. She does that with whomever she will. That is not someone that I'd want my son to marry. Do you know what I mean? So how much more do you think the father may, see, may feel about his son marrying? If we are called in Christ, put him on. If you've been called in Christ, then by faith receive the Holy Spirit, which is by faith going to cause you to walk out his life pure, undefiled, uncorrupted by the very spots of the world. Don't let your robe be blemished in any way. With that, I'm going to end this particular uh, set because I've already reached my limit here on minutes because YouTube changed the rules. I am going to come back to this. We're going to start again at uh, verse 12 in just a moment. Uh, Pastor Dave's got to sit down in a minute. Okay? God bless. Thank you.